the possibility of life beyond planet Earth has captivated the human imagination. What sort of creatures exist beyond our fragile Earth? What lurks in the void? What beasts stalk the shores of alien worlds that have vastly different environmental conditions to our own planet? The possibilities are vast, with the potential to be strange and wondrous. There are so many factors to consider. Atmospheric pressure, temperature, biospheres, rainfall. Yet we can make one assumption about alien life. That the aliens will look just like us, but with like forehead ridges or something. Imagining alien life forms should require no thought. However, if a writer must take time to detail their alien species, then it helps to rely only on the most time-tested tropes, rather than engage with our creativity or consider scientific principles. So let us venture forth into the stars in search of alien life and design an alien ecosystem for our story. Now, when designing an alien ecology, the most important thing to remember is how environment shapes adaptation, and life can also shape the environment. These environmental conditions, oxygen content, temperature, rainfall, etc., will affect biodiversity. Therefore, the easiest way to keep our workload low is to make the environmental conditions the same across the entire planet. Now that we have simplified our planet into a single binome, we can completely ignore environmental conditions anyway. It's totally okay to put a giant furless creature in arctic conditions. Surely having a large body with no fur or blubber will acclimate it to a winter environment and it wouldn't just freeze to death within minutes. Speaking of large apex predators, this is what most ecologies should consist of in their entirety. The bigger the better. Who cares about the square cube law or sustainable predator-prey population ratios? Huge predators need large amounts of energy, so when choosing between attacking a slow but large and injured herbivore or the comparatively small and less nutritious protagonist, the apex predator will obviously drop everything it's doing and chase down our interstellar explorers instead. It will likely hunt our main characters for a good portion of the plot, expending far more energy than it would gain from eating a human. It will not give up the hunt even if our explorers manage to injure it and drive it away temporarily. Never should an apex predator know when to cut its losses and look for easier prey, just treat them like a video game monster. While predators are all universally large, hyper-aggressive, and savage, all herbivores should be portrayed as passive, harmless, and kind, just like all real-life herbivores who never aggressively defend their territory. All animal behavior should either be completely passive or unreasonably hostile regardless of the loss of potential story conflict. Figuring out the habits and behavior patterns of alien life sounds too much like real biology and I slept through that class. There is no in-between in regards to behavior, just like there are no scavengers or omnivores. There are parasites, of course, and we all know that alien parasites are capable of jumping host to humans in spite of human physiology being literally alien to them. These parasites will erupt violently from their human host, providing the special effects department something to do, and will always kill their host. These parasites, of course, will grow to full maturity within a very short amount of time, even if there's no biomass to eat to justify such quick growth, even accounting for a very high metabolism. Unlike in real life, where parasitoids are actually far, far worse and more horrific, with some going so far as to modify their host behavior, even having the dying host defend the very larvae that have been feasting on their insides. Isn't Mother Nature grand? Also, all alien parasites have at least a 50% chance of being part of a hive mind as well. Now, hive minds can be very interesting, but won't be because nearly every video game book or movie portrays them all the same. Hive minds all have a queen and can easily be defeated by killing said queen. But let's think about this for a moment. A hive mind could be a truly fascinating concept that is yet to have its true potential explored. A true hive mind organism could be analogous to a human body with individual creatures being equivalent to its cells. Each of these creatures are part of a greater whole, all working together to keep the entire species alive. Such an organism might be closer to a nation-state or entire civilization. Imagine a creature with the knowledge, wisdom, and perception on the scale of a civilization. What a novel concept! That can be made much better by simply reducing hive minds down to being space communist. That won't seem dated. Now, when visiting an alien world teeming with life, there should be no need to use protective suits. Just have everyone take their helmets off. That way, we can see their faces and connect with their characters. Otherwise, how else will our hapless crew get infected by the local parasites? When our explorers are not having their rib cages implode from alien parasites or getting chased by the same super persistent apex predator, then they can also spend their time interacting with intelligent alien life. Don't be intimidated. Creating an alien culture is as easy as simply ripping off a human culture. Just take any human society and move them in space and you are done. No need to consider that an alien society would be shaped by both the environment and their ecology. 
Also, disregard that intelligent alien life might be so different from humans that their concept of culture, technology, and even civilization could be completely different from our own. Thankfully, the author did not take any of this into consideration. Developing a believable ecological system for a predominantly featured alien world and considering how it impacts said world would only anchor the reader into the story's setting and distract them from how awesome our manly starship captain is. Why focus on exploring an alien world and understanding the nature of life when we can instead focus on our starship captain's romantic conquest? Well, unless the aliens are ugly. In that case, we should nuke them from orbit. It's the only way to be sure. I'd like to give a shout out to the Quality YouTube subreddit for sharing my channel, link in the description, and I would like to thank everyone who subscribed or shared my videos as well as left ratings. Sorry for the long delay, I hate moving, but that's all done now and I'm settled in. See you soon.